Hmm. Hare Krishna, my dear devotees, welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books, right here in the Haven, which is located in Hive, Kent, Southeast England, just near the English Channel. Um, we have sobering news. The Queen Elizabeth, Elizabeth II has passed away just today, just a, less than an hour ago. And she passed away on the appearance of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, which is very auspicious. She held the post of Queen of England, the UK, for 70 years, the longest living monarch. And she won the hearts of practically everyone in this country. Uh, it will be, she'll be gravely missed and also the world has lost a truly noble soul. If you get a chance, and I'm sure they'll be broadcasting some of her talks at least, please listen to them and hear the voice of reason and kindness and nobility which she embodied. And it's also Bhaktivinoda's appearance day. So I'm going to read something from Bhakti Manot Thakur. This is from the Harinam Chintamani, uh, chapter 8. One of the offenses against the holy name is interpreting the holy name. This is a translation. It's not as direct English, but it's very, very nice. It goes like this. <clears throat> there is no knowledge as pure as the name. There is no vow as powerful as the name. There is no meditation more effective than the name. Nor is there any fruit greater than that attained by the name. There is no greater renunciation than the name. There is no greater peace than the name. In this world, there is no greater pious activity than taking the name, nor is there any quicker progress than in the name. The name is the highest liberation, the highest freedom, the highest destination, the highest peace, the point of no more searching. The name is the highest devotion. The name is the purest inclination of the jiva. The name is the highest love and direct remembrance of the Lord. The name is the cause of all causes, the Supreme Lord, most worshipable, and is a form of guru to bring one to the Lord. Srila Bhakti Minod Thakur Ki Jai Bhakti Minod's Appearance Day Ki Jai and may the May the soul of Queen Elizabeth II uh, find the most auspicious destiny. As Krishna said, Purusham Ritrishu, uh, she is the ability in the soul. The, Krishna is the ability in man. So anyone who has an auspicious uh, power and knowledge and fame uh, that is coming from Krishna so we can remember her uh, in that way and remember Krishna at the same time <clears throat> so now let us enter into that hallowed a, a realm, the hallowed abode of hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam. No matter what's happening, when we hear the Srimad Bhagavatam, we associate directly with Krishna. And if we hear without offense, we can see Krishna in the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam and get the supreme solace, the supreme peace and the supreme ecstasy of love for Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam Mahima Stotram 
by Srila Sanatana Goswami glorifies the Bhagavatam which gave us the pastimes of Krishna. Goes like this Sarva Shastram Dipi Yusha Sarva Vedaika Satpala Sarva Siddhanta Ratnaja Sarva Lokaika Drik Prada O nectar from the ocean of all scriptures singular fruit of all the Vedas, rich mine of the precious gems of all conclusive truths. You are the only giver of sight to all the worlds. Sarva Bhagavata Prana, Srimad Bhagavata Prabho, Kali Dwando Dita Ditya, Sri Krishna Parivartita. O life heir of all the Supreme Lord's devotees, O Master, Srimad Bhagavatam, you are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali. You are the exact image of Sri Krishna. Paramananda Pataya Prema Varshak Shadayate Sarvada Sarvasevyaya Sri Krishnaya Namostume. I bow down to you who were supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna Himself. Madikabando Matsangin Madguro Man Mahadana Manishdadakamad Bhagya Mad Anandana Mostute. My only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth my Savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. Asadu sadhu ta dayin atini chuchata kada hanamuncha gadachin mam prem narit kanta yokspura O bestower of the saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalter of the most fallen, please never leave me Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So we're, we've reached the seventh uh, chapter of the seventh of, of the fourth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Mm. The sacrifice performed by Daksha. Lord Shiva has been pacified by Brahma and all the demigods and the havoc that he uh, caused to the sacrifice is being rectified by Lord Shiva, the best of all Vaishnavas. We're beginning with text 7. Thereafter, Bhrigu, the chief of the great sages, invited Lord Shiva to come to the sacrificial arena. Thus the demigods, accompanied by the sages, Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma, all went to the place where the great sacrifice was being performed. Purport. The whole sacrifice arranged by King Daksha had been disturbed by Lord Shiva. Therefore, all the demigods present there, along with Lord Brahma and the great sages, specifically requested Lord Shiva to come and revive the sacrificial fire. There is a common phrase, Shiva Hina Yagya, any sacrifice without 
that the presence of Lord Shiva is baffled. Lord Vishnu is Jagyeshwar, the Supreme Personality in the matter of sacrifice. Yet in each Yagya, there is necessary, it is necessary for all the demigods, headed by Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, to be present. Text 8 mm. After everyone, after everything was executed exactly as directed by Lord Shiva, Daksha's body was joined to the head of the animal meant to be killed in the sacrifice. Purport This time, all the demigods and great sages were very careful not to irritate Lord Shiva. Therefore, whatever he asked was done. It is specifically said here that Daksha's body was joined to the head of an animal, a goat. Text 9 When the animal's head was fixed on the body of King Daksha, Daksha was immediately brought to consciousness. And as he awakened from sleep, the king saw Lord Shiva standing before him. Purport. The example given here is that Daksha got up as if he were awakened from deep sleep. In Sanskrit this is called Sukta Ivotashto. The meaning is that after a man awakens from sleep, he immediately remembers all the duties which he must execute. Daksha was killed and his head was taken away and burned to ashes. His body was lying dead, but by the grace of Lord Shiva, as soon as the head of a goat was joined to the body, Daksha came back to consciousness again. This indicates that consciousness is also individual. Daksha actually took another body when he took on the head of a goat. But because consciousness is individual, his consciousness remained the same, although his bodily condition changed. This bodily construction has nothing to do with the development of consciousness. Consciousness is carried with the transmigration of the soul. There are many instances of this in Vedic history such as the case of Maharaj Bharat. After quitting his body as a king, Maharaj Bharat was transferred to the body of a deer, but he retained the same consciousness. He knew that although formerly he was King Bharat, he had been transferred to the body of a deer because of his absorption in thinking of a deer at the time of his death. In spite of his having the body of a deer, however, his consciousness was as good as if it was in the body of King Bharat. The arrangement of the Lord is so nice that if a person's consciousness is turned into Krishna consciousness, there is no doubt that in his next life he will be a great devotee of Krishna, even if he is offered a different type of body. Text 10 At that time, when Daksha saw Lord Shiva, who rides upon a bull, his heart, which was polluted by envy of Lord Shiva, was immediately cleansed, just as the water in a lake is cleansed by autumn rains. Purport Here is an example of why Lord Shiva is called auspicious. If anyone sees Lord Shiva with devotion and reverence, his heart is immediately cleansed. King Daksha was polluted by envy of Lord Shiva, and yet by seeing him with a little love and devotion, his heart immediately became cleansed. In the rainy season, the reservoirs of water became dirty, become dirty and muddy. But as soon as the autumn rain comes, all the water immediately becomes clear and transparent. Similarly, although Daksha's heart was impure due to his, due to, because of his having slandered Lord Shiva, for which he was severely punished, Daksha now came to consciousness 
And just by seeing Lord Shiva with veneration and respect, he became immediately purified. Text 7. Text 10, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Text 11. King Daksha wanted to offer prayers to Lord Shiva. But as he remembered the ill-fated death of his daughter Sati, his eyes filled with tears, and in bereavement, his voice choked up, and he could not say anything. Text 12 At this time, King Daksha, afflicted by love and affection, was very much awakened to his real senses. With great endeavor, he pacified his mind, checked his feelings, and with pure consciousness began to offer prayers to Lord Shiva. Text 13 King Daksha said, My dear Lord Shiva, I committed a great offense against you, but you were so kind that instead of withdrawing your mercy, you have done me a great favor by punishing me. You and Lord Vishnu never neglect even useless, unqualified brahmanas. Why then should you neglect me, who am engaged in performing sacrifices? Purport. Although Daksha felt defeated, he knew that his punishment was simply the great mercy of Lord Shiva. He remembered that Lord Shiva and Lord Vishnu are never neglectful of the brahmanas, even though the brahmanas are sometimes unqualified. According to Vedic civilization, a descendant of a brahmana family should never be heavily punished. This was exemplified in Arjuna's treatment of Ashwatthama. Ashwatthama was the son of a great brahmana, Dronacharya, and in spite of his having committed the great offense of killing all the sleeping sons of the Pandavas, for which he was condemned even by Lord Krishna, Arjuna excused him by not killing him because he happened to be the son of a Brahmana. The word Brahma Bandushu, Brahma Bandushu used here is significant. Brahma Bandhu means a person who is born of a Brahmana father but whose activities are not up to the standard of the Brahmanas. Such a person is not a Brahmana but a Brahma Bandhu. Daksha proved himself to be a Brahma Bandhu. He was born of a great Brahmana father, Lord Brahma, but his treatment of Lord Shiva was not exactly Brahminical. Therefore he admitted that he was not a perfect Brahmana. Lord Shiva and Lord Vishnu, however, are affectionate even to an imperfect Brahmana. Lord Shiva punished Daksha, not as one does his enemy. Rather, he punished Daksha just to bring him to his senses so that he would know that he had done wrong. Daksha could understand this and he acknowledged the great mercy of Lord Krishna and Lord Shiva towards the fallen Brahmanas, including even himself. Although he was fallen, his vow was to execute the sacrifice as is the duty of Brahmanas, and thus he began his prayers to Lord Shiva. Text 14 My dear great and powerful Lord Shiva, you were created first from the mouth of Lord Brahma in order to protect the Brahmanas in pursuing education, austerities, vows, and self-realization. As protector of the Brahmanas, you always protect the regulated principles they follow, just as a cowherd boy keeps a stick in his hand to give protection to the cows. Purport The specific function of a human being in society, irrespective of his social status, <clears throat> is to practice control of the mind and senses by observing the regulated principles enjoined in the Vedic Shastras. Lord Shiva is called Pashupati 
because he protects the living entities in their developed consciousness so that they may follow the Vedic system of Varna and Ashram. The word Pashu refers to the animal as well as the word Pashu refers to the animal as well as to the human entity. It is stated here that Lord Shiva is always interested in protecting the animals and the animalistic living entities who are not very advanced in the spiritual sense. It is also stated that the Brahmanas are produced from the mouth of the Supreme Lord. We should always remember that Lord Shiva is being addressed as the representative of the Supreme Lord, Vishnu. In the Vedic literature, it is, it is described that the Brahmanas are born from the mouth of the universal form of Vishnu. The Kshatriyas are born from his arms, the Vaishyas from his abdomen or waist, and the Shudras from his legs. In the formation of a body, the head is the principal factor. The Brahmanas are born from the mouth of the Supreme Personality of Godhead in order to accept charity for worship of Vishnu and to spread Vedic knowledge. Lord Shiva is known as Pashupati, the protector of the Brahmanas and other living entities. He protects them from the attacks of non-Brahmanas or uncultured persons who are against the self-realization self process. Another feature of this word is that persons who are simply attached to the ritualistic portion of the Vedas and do not understand the situation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead are not more, any more advanced than animals. In the beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam, it is confirmed that even though one performs the rituals of the Vedas, if he does not develop a sense of Krishna consciousness, then all his labor in performing Vedic rituals is considered to be a, simply a waste of time. Lord Shiva's aim in destroying the Daksha Yagya was to punish Daksha because, because by neglecting him, Lord Shiva, Daksha was committing a great offense. Lord Shiva's punishment was just like that of a cowherd boy who keeps a stick to frighten his animals. It is commonly said that to give protection to animals, a stick is needed because animals cannot reason and argue. Their reasoning and, reasoning and argument is argumentum ad baculum. Unless there is a rod, they do not obey. Force is required for the animalistic class of men, whereas those who are advanced are convinced by reasons, arguments, and scriptural authority. Persons who are simply attached to Vedic rituals without further advancement of devotional service or Christian consciousness are almost like animals. And Lord Shiva is in charge of giving them protection and sometimes punishing them as he punished Daksha. Text 15 I did not know your full glories. For this reason, I threw arrows of sharp words at you in the open assembly, although you did not take them into account. I was going down to hell because of my disobedience to you, who are the most respectable personality. But you took compassion upon me and saved me by awarding punishment. I request you to I request, I request that you be pleased by your own mercy, since I cannot satisfy you by my words. Purport. As usual, a devotee in an adverse condition of life accepts such a condition to be the mercy of the Lord. Factually, the insulting words used by Daksha against Lord Shiva were enough to have him thrown perpetually into hellish life. But Lord Shiva, being kind toward him, awarded him punishment to neutralize the offense. 
King Daksha realized this and, fe and feeling obliged for Lord Shiva's magnanimous behavior wanted to show his gratitude. Sometimes a father punishes his child and when the child is grown up and comes to his senses he understands that the father's punishment was not actually punishment but mercy. Similarly, Daksha appreciated that the punishment offered to him by Lord Shiva was a manifestation of Lord Shiva's mercy. That is the symptom of a person making progress on the path of Krishna consciousness. It is said that a devotee in Krishna consciousness never takes any miserable condition of life to be condemnation by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He accepts the miserable condition to be the grace of the Lord and he thinks, I would have been punished or put into a more dangerous condition of life due to my past misdeeds, but the Lord has protected me. Thus I have received only a little punishment as token execution of the law of karma. Thinking of His grace in that way, a devotee always surrenders to the Supreme Personality of Godhead more and more seriously and is not disturbed by such so-called punishment. Text 16 The great Maitreya, the great sage Maitreya said, Thus being pardoned by Lord Shiva, King Daksha, with the permission of Lord Brahma, again began the performance of the Yajna, along with the great learned sages and priests and others. Text 17 Thereafter, in order to resume the activities of sacrifice, the Brahmanas first arranged to purify the sacrificial arena of the contamination caused by the touch of Virabhadra and the other ghostly followers of Lord Shiva. Then they arranged to offer into the fire the oblations known as Purudasha. Purport Lord Shiva's followers and devotees headed by Virabhadra are known as Viras and they are ghostly demons. Not only did they pollute the entire sacrificial arena by their very presence, but they disturbed the whole situation by passing stool and urine. Therefore the infection they had, therefore the infection they had created was to be first purified by the method of offering Purudasha oblations. A Vishnu Yajna or an offering to Lord Vishnu cannot be performed uncleanly. To offer anything in an unclean state is called a Seva Aparad. The worship of the Vishnu deity in the temple is also Vishnu Yajna. In all Vishnu temples, therefore the priest who takes care of the Archana Vidhi must be very clean. Everything should be always kept neat and clean. And the foodstuff should be prepared in a neat and clean manner. All these regulatory principles are described in the nectar of devotion. There are 32 kinds of offenses. <clears throat> there are 20, 32 kinds of offenses in discharging Archana service. It is required, therefore, that one be extremely careful not to be unclean. Generally, whenever any ritualistic ceremony is begun, the holy name of the Lord, Vishnu, is first chanted in order to purify the situation. Whether one is in a pure or impure condition, internally or externally, if one chants or even remembers the holy name of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vishnu, one immediately becomes purified. The Yajna arena was desecrated by the presence of Lord Shiva's followers, headed by Virabhadra, and therefore the entire arena had to be sanctified. Although Lord Shiva was present, and he is all auspicious, it was still necessary to sanctify the place 
because his followers had broken into the arena and committed so many obnoxious acts. That sanctification was possible only by chanting the holy name of Vishnu. Trikapala That sanctification was possible only by chanting the holy name of Vishnu, Trikapala, which can sanctify the three worlds. In other words, it is, it is admitted herein that the followers of Lord Shiva are generally unclean. They are not even very hygienic. They do not take baths regularly. They wear long hair and they smoke ganja. Persons of such irregular habits are counted amongst the ghosts. Persons of such irregular habits are counted amongst the ghosts. <clears throat> Since they were present in the sacrificial arena, the atmosphere became polluted and it had to be sanctified by Trikapala oblations, which indicated the invocation of Vishnu's favor. Text 18. The great sage Maitreya said to Vidura, My dear Vidura, as soon as King Daksha offered the clarified butter with Yajra Veda mantras in sanctified meditation, Lord Vishnu appeared there in his original form as Narayana. Purport <clears throat> Lord Vishnu is all pervading. Any devotee who, in sanctified meditation, following the regulated principles, chants the required mantras in service and in a devotional mood, can see Vishnu. It is said in the Brahma Sangita that a devotee whose eyes are anointed with the ointment of love of Godhead can see the Supreme Personality of Godhead always within his heart. Lord Shamasundar is so kind to his devotee. Text 19 Lord Narayana was seated on the shoulder of Stotra or Garuda who had big wings. As soon as the Lord appeared all directions were illuminated diminishing the luster of Brahma and the others present. Purport A description of Narayana is given in the following two shlokas. Text 20. His complexion was blackish, his garment yellow like gold, and his helmet as dazzling as the sun. His hair was bluish, the color of black bees, and his face was decorated with earrings. His eight hands held a conch shell, wheel, club, lotus flower, arrow, bow, shield, and sword and they were decorated with golden ornaments such as bangles and bracelets. His whole body resembled a blossoming tree beautifully decorated with various kinds of flowers. Purport The face of Lord Vishnu is described in this verse as described in this verse appears like a lotus flower with bees humming over it all of the ornaments on the body of Lord Vishnu resemble molten gold of the reddish gold color or the, the molten gold of the reddish gold color I'll read this again all of the ornaments on the body of Lord Vishnu resemble molten gold of the reddish gold color of the morning sunrise the, the Lord appears just as the morning sun rises to protect the whole universal creation. His arms display different weapons and his eight hands are compared to the eight petals of a lotus flower. All the weapons mentioned are for the protection of his devotees. Generally, in the four hands of Vishnu, there are a club 
a wheel, club, conch shell, and lotus flower. These four symbols are seen in the four hands of Vishnu in different arrangements. The club and the wheel are the Lord's symbols of punishment for the demons and miscreants, and the lotus flower and conch shell are used to bless the devotees. There are always two classes of men, the devotees and the demons. As confirmed in Bhagavad Gita, Puritranaya Sadhunam, the Lord is always ready for the protection of the devotees and the annihilation of the demons. There are demons and devotees in this material world, but in the spiritual world there is no such distinction. In other words, Lord Vishnu is the proprietor of both the material and spiritual worlds. In the material world, almost everyone is of the demoniac nature. But there are also devotees who appear to be in the material world, although they are always situated in the spiritual world. A devotee's position is always transcendental and he is always protected by Lord Vishnu. Text 21 Lord Vishnu looked extraordinarily beautiful because the goddess of fortune and a garland were situated on his chest. His face was beautifully, beautifully decorated with a smiling attitude which can captivate the entire world, especially the devotees. Fans of white hair appeared on both sides of the Lord like white swans, and the white canopy overhead looked like the moon. Purport The smiling face of Lord Vishnu <clears throat> is pleasing to the whole world. Not only devotees, but even non-devotees are attracted by such a smile. This verse nicely describes how the sun, moon, eight-petaled lotus flower, and humming black bees were represented by the fans of hair, the overhead canopy, the moving earrings on both sides of his face, and his blackish hair. Altogether, accompanied by the conch shell, wheel, club, lotus flower, bow, arrows, shield, and sword in his hands, these presented a grand and beautiful audience for Lord Vishnu, which captivated all the demigods there, including Daksha and Lord Brahma. And it's five minutes after eight, and we're going to stop our reading. We took a little extra time today to glorify Bhakti Manod Thakur and also to offer some homage to the Queen of England, who just passed away after 70 years, the largest, I mean the longest, reign of any queen or king in the history of this country. Uh, so it's an auspicious day. Um, and the Srimad Bhagavatam has appeared. Hare Krishna. So we'll start our reading tomorrow mm. with, with text 22. And we will rate in anticipation of the reflections of the assembled Vaishnavas. Hare Krishna. Okay, first is from Gopakanya Devi Dasi. Yes, Gopakanya Devi Dasi. Jai Maharaj and all assembled sages, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna to you oh. and to all the devotees present and all the devotees who will listen later. Thank you very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and Srimad Bhagavatam. Jai, Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, His Divine Grace ki jai. jai. Happy Appearance Day of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur Jai Ho. Thank you very much. And from Su Devi Dasi. Yes, Su Devi Dasi. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna to you too, as always and ever, forever. And from Rati Manjari? Yes, Rati. Jai Guru Maharaj, 
Jai Sri the Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Hopping in and out of the reading tonight due to the preparations for Sri Ratha Yatra coming on Saturday. One. Well done. Thank you for offering us access into the Supreme Solace day after day. Mm. And from Dayanidhi. Dayanidhi, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. To you, Hare Krishna. And from Anandamurti Devi Dasi. Yes, Anandamurti Devi Dasi. Dear Guru Maharaj and all assembled devotees, please accept my humble obeisance as all glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Jai, all glories to His Divine Grace. Thank you so much for reading Srimad Bhagavatam. Thank you so much for reading the Bhaktivinoda Thakur's beautiful description about the glorification of the holy name of the Lord. Hare Krishna. And this is from Shayan. Shane. Hare Krishna, Shayan. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance as all glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Thanks for the blissful reading on this auspicious day. Mm. Yes, we hope that the reading of the Bhagavatam made the day even more auspicious. And from Bhakti Rupa. Krishna said that wherever we were reading about the Daksha Yajna and how Vishnu uh, appeared, uh, and there's a verse in the Bhagavatam that says that the Lord is not, you know, in, in the hearts of the yogis or persons who give large sacrifices, but rather he lives in he, he come he lives in that place where the devotees of the Lord are glorifying him, chanting his holy names and the holy Srimad Bhagavatam. Hare Krishna. And he also said Prabhupada also told us that when you hear the Bhagavatam with faith and with love your hearing of it is not different than seeing Krishna face to face Hare Krishna next is from Bhakta Rupa yes Bhakta Rupa thank you for reading Maharaj very kind of you I really appreciate the description of Vishnu's jewelry being molten reddish gold like from mm. a sunrise. Mm. Is Krishna's jewelry the same color? Yes. Hare Krishna. And from Subarao? Yes, Subarao. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances and all glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Thank you for your daily readings. One of the highlights from the purport is I want to qualify one statement I just made. It's as beautiful as Vishnu's ornaments, Krishna's ornaments, but many times they are also simpler and plainer, like forest flowers and florist, forest pigments and uh, things like that things that are naturally found in the forest but he also has golden ornaments and so many things and they the the kind of effulgence that Vishnu exhibits in his ornaments is is beautiful Krishna's are as beautiful but they're even more beautiful in the sense that they awaken spontaneous love whereas the effulgence of Narayana and his uh, his ornaments awaken a sense of awe and veneration and deep loving respect so there's also a difference Hare Krishna Subarao Hare Krishna <clears throat> one of the highlights from the purport is from 479 quote the arrangement by the Lord is so nice that if a person's consciousness is turned into Krishna consciousness 
There is no doubt that in his next life he will be a great devotee of, of Krishna, even if he is offered a different type of body. Hmm. Unquote. I remember this verse from <coughs> Bhagavad Gita. Neha bhi kramanashrasti pratyavayo navidyate svalpam apyasudamasya trayate mahato bayat. In this endeavor there is no loss or diminution, and a little advancement on this path can protect one from the most dangerous type of fear. Daily readings, ki dry. Hare Krishna. proof of the pudding is in the eating. The proof of what you said is in the hearing. Hare Krishna. If we hear with complete faith and love, then we see Krishna in the pages of the Bhagavatam. And our hearts and minds and senses become completely satisfied. Except that they hanker Every time we hear it, it we increases our hankering to be able to be with the Lord. But this is non-different. You should know and be convinced of this truth. Hare Krishna. And this is from Sarvagya. Yes, Sarvagya. Please accept my humble obeisance, Maharaj. If we see Krishna is with is everywhere within and without then there is no question of ego, prestige, and fighting with other countries. That is the only thing that makes everything auspicious. Yes, therefore, all the solutions to the world problems, both individually and collectively, are found in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Everything is there complete, but it depends on our consciousness how much of that we can see, how much of that we can perceive, and therefore how much, how closely we can follow the examples set in the scriptures. And for us in particular, the examples of the behavior and the attitudes and the relationships and loving exchanges between Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his associates and among those associates is particularly meaningful and uh, pertinent to our lives. That will make our movement strong this is what Prabhupada meant when he said that the test of our love for him will be how well we cooperate together to keep his movement together. The movement is in no danger from outside forces, no matter how difficult or strong they are. But it is in danger from within. If we do not act properly towards one another, and if we unnecessarily fight. This is our uh, solemn duty. Um, when Srila Prabhupada, when, when a person of Srila Prabhupada's stature leaves the earth, there is automatically, in every case, disorder, some kind of disorder. But those who are actually uh, loving servants of Srila Prabhupada will act in a way to create order out of the disorder wherever they are. And that means to follow his teachings, to do what he wanted us to do in the way that he wanted us to do it. And that means all of us to cooperate in loving devotion, to broadcast the glories of Sri Krishna, Radha and Krishna and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and all of their uh, dedicated uh, followers and associates. We are in Lord Chaitanya's pastime right now. The spreading of Krishna consciousness to every town and village is the pastime of Lord Chaitanya. So those of us who are aware of that and who act accordingly with sincerity, never mind our capacity, some may have large capacities, some may have smaller capacities, but as long as we are trying to do that sincerely, then the movement is secure. Hare Krishna. 
Next is from Anandamurti Devi Dasi. Yes, Anandamurti. Today I heard that all the arrangement of the Lord had properly been done, and Daksha's heart was totally cleansed. So I felt finally the Supreme Lord Krishna helped all the havoc in the situation become peaceful. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes. And the reading of this Srimad Bhagavatam every day as we do with like-minded devotees is also cleansing our hearts and, and, and making us more attached to Krishna and to one another. This is the proof of the pudding, Hare Krishna. Next is from Daitari Hari. Mm -hmm. Daitari Hari. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Happy Bhakti Vinod Thakur's appearance day. Thank you very much. It's interesting to see how Daksha's heart changes so much here after his severe chastisement. Mm. He even became highly emotional about the death of his daughter. Yes. Previously, he didn't even bat an eye like that. Yes. It's also interesting to note that later on in the Bhagavatam, he goes on to blaspheme Narada Muni. Yes. Similar behavior from Indra, who was offering prayers and displaying great remorse towards Krishna after his great offense of trying to wipe out Vrindavan. Yes. It seems like even though they display sincere regret, their change of heart clearly didn't go deep enough to root out the offensive mentality they had. How this is, this is caught. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. How can we root out the offensive and envious attitude from our hearts altogether so that we're never at risk of offending great personalities? It seems like a lot of work that sentimental exhibitions of devotion can't change it is hard work it should be hard work and we should not expect it that, that it should not be hard work because what we are trying to achieve is the highest thing so the way to do that is to do is to gradually take the process of Krishna consciousness the basics and fix them in our consciousness to fix them in our attitude you know the very basics of Krishna consciousness are given in the Gita the ABCs Prabhupada called them and he said that Krishna said that when we actually receive this knowledge then we will not again fall into illusion because we will see that all living beings are but a part of the Supreme in other words, Krishna says, they are mine, that they're mine. Everyone and everything belongs to Krishna. So if you want to overcome this ignorance that causes us to do these bad things, the first thing is that we have to become fixed in this conception. And automatically our misconceptions will be diminished and eventually dissolved altogether. We have to see how everything is just by hearing, by the knowledge coming through the Shastra. We have to see that everything belongs to Krishna. Everything and everyone belongs to Krishna. And, and is, is therefore, we should offer everything and everyone proper respect. We may not act the same with everyone. You don't act the same with a tiger or an ant or a mosquito that's just about to bite you and give you malaria. But still we have to respect them as, as actually uh, the sitting place of the super soul. Sitting place of the soul and the super soul in every living being. So practice first remembering that due to the knowledge we get from the Shastras. And if we do that by practice, by practice, by years of practice, gradually it will become more real, more specific, more precise, our realization. And then we will not feel enmity to anyone. Even Lord Shiva felt that piercing words from Daksha. 
because he was his father-in-law. He was relative. And yet, and, and it says in the Shastra that the, per, the, the piercing words or insults from a loved one are very piercing, more piercing than sharp arrows. And everyone feels that. Even Krishna sometimes felt that, you know, when some demon would, you know, attack him or make an illusion that his father was killed in front of his eyes. He would feel feelings, real feelings. He's the source of all feelings. But then, of course, instantaneously he would act and he would destroy that person. But what, when he destroyed that person, that person would become better benefited. Nothing he does to any living being is not for the benefit of that living being. Even the lower births in which we see in front of our eyes every day the suffering that the birds and worms and, and dogs and all kinds of living beings, human beings, how, how, what, what they're going through. But we can't see that unless our eyes are smeared with love. And that love, it comes from hearing again and again, more and more, learn more and more about Krishna. And the more we hear about Him, the more we learn about Him, the more our, our attachment for Him will grow. And eventually that will, meet, that will be transformed into full-blown love for Him. And then our problems are finished. Because we can see that everything's being arranged by Krishna, just as it should be. Therefore, all the demigods were able to do this sacrifice and still respond to Dakshi even though he had a goat's head on his head, on his body. He performed the same act, but in a different consciousness. Purified by Lord Shiva. Hare Krishna. Taitari also commented, I hope I haven't ironically offended Indra or Daksha by my remark. They are both far more exalted than me. No, but when we hear about persons, whoever they are, offending the Lord, then we, are, we, have, the, we have the right to feel that feeling towards them. But we also have to respond in the way that Krishna responded. He wasn't... When, when Indra offered these prayers, Krishna didn't hardly pay attention to him. With Brahma, it was different. He gave them very firm instructions and advice. But with Indra, he, he practically didn't say anything because he's so, he's so much offended the Brajbasis. So it's not wrong to feel anger or to feel uh, resent, not resentment, but feel negative feelings toward those who uh, offend and attack the Vaishnavas or the Supreme Lord. If you don't feel like that, then you're not, your spiritual life is not real. So you mentioned it yourself, just the sentimental pretense that you're doing devotional service is not the real thing. The real thing is if you have assimilated this knowledge, taken it into your heart, believed it, and then followed it to the point where you have realization. Hare Krishna. This is from Sarvagya. Yes, Sarvagya. In the purport, hit me. If once our heart is cleansed, then the Lord will come and stay. Yes. Cleaning by chanting, hearing, getting purity, removing all the anarthas from our heart, and then, and then the Lord will come and stay in our heart. How Lord Vishnu came after cleaning the dirty things in the yagya. Yes. The Lord is already there in the heart. He doesn't come and go from the heart. But we th can't see him. He becomes covered by our ignorance and our attachment. But he's there all the time. That's what a good friend he is. 
He never leaves us, even when we're obnoxious to him. Hare Krishna. From Daitari Hari. Yes, Daitari Hari. He says, thank you, Maharaj. These answers you give are phenomenal. Forever in your debt. Hare Krishna. Ditto. Back to you. Thank you all. Your realizations and your reflections are getting better and better and I am responding to them. And therefore, if anything that I say is getting better, it is a result of response to you. Hare Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Samabheda Bhakta Vrinda ki jai. Gaur Premanandi Hari Hari Bo. See you tomorrow night. <coughs> same time, same place, same topic. And we'll hear about the successful sacrifice of Jagya Daksha. Hare Krishna. See you tomorrow.